Hey, Blender Bob here. Right now at Real by Fake, we're working on a show where the story happens in New York and we need to create buildings. And I want to show you a very old trick on how to make the windows look more realistic. Also, we're going to take a quick look on how they did the shot in the matrix of the helicopter crashing into the building. This shot here and all the wavy effect that you have in the building. Not the explosion, that would be a little bit more complicated, but just the wavy effect. All right, so here we go. So let's start with the grid. We're going to scale it up to get nice vertical windows. We want to make sure we apply the transformations. So you can go into the object menu and go apply transformations. All the transformations are right. Now we're going to select all the edges. I got my own Pi menu here that I use with Pi menu editor. That's how I like to work. That's the way it is. Okay, so you select all the edges and you just bevel a little bit. The next step is to select one of the windows. So we're going to pick one here, this one, and we're going to go select by area, similar area. So this way we select all the windows. Now we're going to extrude them. Again, I have my own Pi menu, but it's just an extrude. So we extrude them a little bit. All right, now let's assign a shader to the windows. So new, and let's call it glass. And we're going to make another one that we're going to call frame. So we're going to invert the selection and uh, create another one uh, new and this one's gonna be called frame okay i extruded too much let me just bring this back a little bit all right okay so we don't want this we want something random and this is how we're going to do it we're going to go into uv and we're going to do a smart uv project use the default settings that's all good and you see now everything is random and this is what we're looking for Okay, now I can disconnect the texture that's there, so I don't need this anymore. I will set the metallic at 100% and the roughness at zero. Let me zoom in so we can see something. Okay, so uh, we want the roughness at zero. Now, if we look at it, we get a perfect reflection. Let me go into shading mode so we can get a better result. Okay, so now you see it's a perfect mirror and this is what we don't want. Okay, now we're gonna create a Musgrave texture. And after this, we're gonna create a bump node and we will simply connect the height with the height of the bump and the normal output into the normal input. So yeah, we get a distortion in the glass, but you can feel that it's going from one window to the other. We don't want that. So let's go back to the shader. If you have installed the free add-on that comes with Blender Node Wrangler, you can just press Ctrl T and it will create these two nodes here. And now we want to connect the UV to the vector. And now we get this pattern that is not repetitive, doesn't look like it's following all the windows like before. And we just need to reduce the strength to the amount that we want. So we just want to get a small distortion in the window just to make sure that it's not like a perfect mirror. This is still too much. Try different settings until you get the result that you're looking for. Now look in the graph. This is really cool. This is what we're looking for here. Okay, let's try another method for the matrix thing. We're going to start with a plane and I'm, I'm going to keep it horizontal like this. You will see why later. So I've scaled it. Now I need to apply the transformation. I did it with a hotkey. Now let's add some divisions to this window. We'll need a lot. Again, I'm using my custom Pi menu here, but it's just a regular cut tool here. So I will insert some lines here. All right, that should be enough. And same thing in the other direction until I get some nice squares everywhere. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll select all the polygons and in theory, I should be able to use shift comma to reduce to shrink the selection, but it doesn't work. I think it's a bug. I will report it as a bug because it should work. Because you see, if I just select some polygons in the center here and I go shift period, I can go bigger and shift comma to go smaller. But when everything is selected, it doesn't want to shrink anymore. So I'll just do it manually for now. Here we go. All right, another extrude. I will set my origin right here and now I can use the array modifier to copy this window. Okay, so back in object mode, you just go modifier array and I want 10 in the X direction, so 10. Now we do the same thing in the Y direction. Let's apply both modifiers. You can do it with the hotkey also. So apply and now it's one piece, but the vertices are not all connected. So what we're gonna do is to select them all and do a merge by distance. It's in the mesh cleanup merge by distance and you can see it joined uh, over 3000 vertices. To create the wavy effect, we're gonna add a modifier called wave. We can place it where we want it on the window using the start position, start position in X and in Y. So we'll just place it right there and a little bit more, yeah. And then again, whoops, yeah, this way. All right, now it's centered. Adjust the fall off, the height, the width, and all these settings for the wave to get the result that you are expecting. And to animate it, all you will have to do is to keyframe the offset. The reason we worked horizontally is because the modifier only works in the X and Y axis. But once you made it, you can rotate your geometry back to 90 degrees. Because you see here, it's only X and Y. But it's still going to work if you play with the offset and all the settings. It's still going to work. 
if you saw my clip from yesterday about the motion capture in Movella, yeah, this one here, you could see that I really badly needed a haircut, huh? So yeah, I just went like, mm, looks better, huh? Because I started to look like Bernie Sanders. Mm. Okay, anyway, bye.